So pretty much what happened is I was I was overseas and I wanted them to have a clothing brand. I was in Africa. This was on a different mission, and I I wanted a clothing brand. I wanted something that was entre- entrepreneurial. I uh, just didn't know what it was, and I was like, "Well, I can do a clothing brand. I know apparel. I know." Originally, I was starting. It was going to be a, a gym brand, but why compete with Gym Shark, Lululemon? Welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Uniforms, and today we have Kyle. Um, I'm probably going to kill your last name, D'Antoni. Is that right? Yes, sir. There we go. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, we've connected. Actually, we connected uh, because I'm one of the uh, group owners, I guess, of the university that we're both going to, AMU, American Military University. And uh, you made a post in the group, and I, we talked a little bit about what you're doing. I thought it was really cool, um, aside from the fact that you, you know, obviously better in yourself, but what you're doing right now with your own podcast and your own apparel line. Um, so I thought it'd be a great opportunity to get you on here and chat a little bit about your time in the service, real quick, and then kind of what you're doing right now. Uh, which I'm really interested to hear more about. So without further ado, Kyle, thanks very much for uh, joining us, man. I appreciate your time today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, yeah. It's good to be on shows like this. I love it. Yeah, and that's just one of the things that I really enjoy doing, man, is just getting to talk to people and just hearing their story and why they started a business or what other, you know, whatever reason that they're on their current venture. Um, it's such a cool opportunity. So, um, yeah, man, just share a little bit about, uh, your time service and what you did and kind of transition into what you're doing now. Yeah. So, um, I am the owner, founder, CEO, COO, chief marketing, you, you name it of 90 apparel. H- was it HMFIC, right? Yeah. Yeah. Master of, master of all or whatever it is. And, yeah, uh, yeah. um, and uh, 90 Apparel, I kind of came out with an idea of it when I was I was downrange. I was in Africa and, you know, kind of just let my mind wander working. And um, and uh, I decided to start a, a clothing brand. Um, but uh, 12 years in the Air Force, I uh, started out at Security Forces, uh, 3PO, um, and then uh, did about six or seven years in that. And then I went into the special operations side of things. And I became a dagger, um, which is deployed aircraft ground response elements. And essentially what we do is that we provide force protection uh, for AFSOC special operations squadrons, wherever they're deployed. Um, This could be aircraft, this could be personnel. um, And we conduct, uh, we advise the mission commander on force protection measures, uh, conduct force protection surveys, risk assessments, close bound security, um, stuff like that. Um, and I've been doing that nice. for almost five years. Nice. And you're, you're done with that though, or are you still doing it? Uh, I'm still, uh, I'm, my DOS is in October. I'm, yeah. I'm currently on a skill bridge at the moment. Nice. Nice. Yeah. It's funny. I didn't even know that. I, mean, I was security forces too. I, um, I did 2001 to 2007. I did my whole time, unfortunately in a hole called Beale. I mean, it's a great place, but once it's like, there's a, there's a thing. It's like once you're at Beal, like there's no getting out. Like people have done their entire career there; they just can't get out. That's what I always hear. You, you got to yeah. go to like a special duty, or yeah, you got to go to like Korea yeah. or something. Yeah. Um, way out. <laughs> my my first station was Mountain Home Air Force Base in Idaho, oh, okay. which is a fantastic base. Um, it's ACC, so uh, very loud, um, very high operational base. If you've never been to ACC bases, um, they're they're very busy. Uh, yeah. Mount Home had, I think, three squadrons of F-15s at the 366th. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I absolutely loved it. Met my wife there. She's a civilian, but um, it's one of the best rated outdoors bases in the Air Force. And then when I went to the schoolhouse and then I went to uh, the 27 out at Cannon Air Force Base. Nice. Yeah, we didn't have anything cool. I mean, well, we did, I guess. We had we had refueling tankers and we had U-2s. I mean, we had the SR-71s when they were in. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. But uh, anyway, so um, I guess enough about that. Uh, now, so you you had an idea while you were gone um, overseas about starting starting a business in Paraline and all that stuff. Like, what inspired you to to get into this? Obviously, your your brand right there, ninety. Um, what is what inspired? Like, I know it's like you focus more on soccer, right? Is that what is that yeah. what you're meaning? Yeah. Okay. So what what kind of inspired you? Obviously, you're probably a fan and everything. Um, what was your inspiration for starting all that?
So pretty much what happened is I was I was overseas and I wanted to have a clothing brand. When I was in, uh, I pretty much came up with the idea. Or let me start back. I guess when I was in college, I started working at Hollister and Abercrombie when I was in college, and just it was a job. I had friends that worked there, so that's where I started. And then I went to college and then um, or continued on to college and went into the Air Force. And then uh, been on five deployments total, uh, and my last three have been in special operations side of things, uh, soft support, and um, with the dagger uh, section. And uh, I, uh, I was in Africa. This was on a different mission, and I, I wanted a clothing brand. I wanted something that was entre- entrepreneurial. I uh, just didn't know what it was, and I was like, "Well, I can do a clothing brand. I know apparel. I know." Originally, it was starting. It was going to be a, a gym brand, but why compete with Jim Shark, Lululemon, you know, all the other ones, you know, fill in the blank with different veteran branded, you know, grunt style and nine line apparel and some of these other ones. But I didn't want mine to be, you know, vet branded, so to speak, you know, with the flag and everything. I just, it really wasn't my style. And so I was like, well, I just, I always used to watch like the, um, to be honest, uh, used to watch like all the Damazetti and the bro science videos. And I just thought the gym culture was pretty comical. And I, I wanted to do like a spinoff of that, but I just, it wasn't really working out that way. I wanted it to, I was going to originally buy out a company, um, capital upfront, everything like that. And then, uh, the guy ended up selling the company before I had the chance to put a bid in. Um, he said that he would pretty much do the exact same thing, but put all my ideas, my, my marketing, everything into it. And um, long story long, it was pretty much a crap product. Uh, and I was in the hole probably three grand um, up front. And uh, the, the the graphics that they were using were stuff that like a, that was off of, you know, clip art and some of these other, you know, it's just, why would I put my name to it? And I refuse to have my name associated with such BS artwork in that context. And yeah. I just didn't want that. So basically i i pulled the plug on that um and uh and this is you know early on into my entrepreneurial world i guess you know this is probably six years ago from now um and then i started a podcast with my friend uh, who's a professional referee and we started on facebook live and uh it was good we got you know a handful of listeners and people asking questions all sorts of stuff um i played soccer since i could walk you know it, I've done everything except for refereeing. I've, I've, you know, made it into the semi pros um, at my last nice. base or uh, my first base. Um, didn't get, didn't really play um, because I went straight into training for my for my schoolhouse. But um, I made it, and uh, that's that's what counts. I kind of checked it off the bucket list. Um, I've coached for six years, so I was pretty much, you know, I played all since I could walk up into in the college and everything, and. So I was like, why, why am I making this so difficult? Why don't I just stick to something I know and I appreciate and I follow almost every day. And that's how I came up on soccer. Um, and I told my friends, I said, I'm going to make a clothing brand. And like, oh yeah, that's great. Let's do it. I'm like, okay, well, this is what I want to do. And essentially one by one, they kind of fell off and mm-hmm. now it's, you know, solo Ono, right? So, um, yeah. And it, that's, that's just kind of how it is at the moment. I like it like that because I don't have other, there's no other equity from other people that are invested in the business, uh, which is good and bad depending on how you look at it. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I, I love it. Um, brand's called 90 Apparel. So uh, yeah, that's how we started. No, that's, that's really awesome, man, because I think like a lot of veterans and business owners, like they, a lot of them have inspiration. Of course, you know, a lot of, they want to go to college and get a job and that's what i did as well um, but then some of us get that entrepreneurial bug which i didn't get until later but when you start going down that path you realize like, it's a lot more difficult than what it looks like oh yeah you know it, it's very hard and i you know and the other hard thing that i found along the way was that you know you've got some people that are interested in what you're doing they want to partner you with you and they want to start doing stuff and i don't know if it was like that for you but for me because you mentioned people started dropping off like that's is how I came across certain things as well when I was um, when I had some people that said they were interested in partnering together. I mean, even now, you know, they want to do some local things and they want to 
you know, do some collaborations. But then when it's time to get down to it, it's like they just either they 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 don't, they're not they lose the motivation. They don't realize how difficult it is. Um, yeah. And so that it's it's tough. Um, Unfortunately, I've kind of come to realize. And I'm not going to throw any names out there, but I've come to realize that as I got older, you have to cut ties. Um, and yeah. it, it's a hard pill to swallow. It really is. Um, I'm a grown up Italian, so family and friends is something that you hold close to you. Um, and, uh, something I've always held close to me ever since I was a kid, my two of my best friends, uh, one of them I've, I've known since, you know, since kindergarten, you know, diaper days, if you will, almost. And then my other best friend I've I met freshman year of college and, um, and I, I refuse to let those two people out of my life, no matter what I do. But on the other hand, there's people where, um, I've kind of been watching a little bit of like Gary V and Al Alex mm -hmm. Hermosi and some of these other guys. And something I've taken to heart the last few years is the word value. Um, yeah. And I kind of make you think about it is that what, what does value mean to you? And I, I've really, I've really taken it. Like I really, really looked hard at it and said, how are the people around me giving me value? If they don't give me value or some sort of internal challenge, maybe, then what are they? If it's just a, a friend, all right, great. We'll see each other maybe once a month, grab a beer or, you know, go tailgate, something like that, or play a pickup game or grab coffee, whatever. But what value do they actually bring to me? And there's other people where, like you were saying that, Oh, I want to be involved in this. I want to be involved in this. All right, cool. This is what I require from you, you know, X, Y, Z, different things. And this is what happened to me is I had a guy that wanted to reach out. He said, I want to do it. I'm in for a thousand dollars or something like that. I said, great. We started talking and turns out I said, I, I want to meet once a week. I want each of us to come up with five ideas and, and, and how those ideas work with the company and designs and so on and so forth. And it just wasn't working. So I just cut, I just cut the tide because there's no value in that. Why, why bust my chops to work schedules and timelines and, and everything when you don't provide value. So I, 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 I've pretty much told myself that unless I meet someone that works harder than me with my business, they don't provide me value unless it's a specialty such as marketing and so on and so forth. Yeah, that's um, man. That's there's a lot to unpack there, and I don't want to go down a rabbit <laughs> hole too much. But you're, but I believe you're 100 percent right. You know, there's there was a there was a, I don't remember. I think it was my mentor. I think it was Dan Locke, maybe who said that one time um, at one of our conferences. He said, um, of course, it's all over the internet, but, but it's it's something to the effect of like you are the average of the five people that you hang around with. Mm. And it kind of resonates with what you just said that if somebody in your life is not bringing you value, then what is the connection? Like, and I may, and I may not go like completely, like just cut them off, like get them, get rid of them out of your life. But I think in certain aspects, like, especially in business, um, you know, you have partnerships, you have collaborations, you have friends, you have all these, these groups of people, but which ones do you, at least for me, which ones do I hold really close and value that I stay in contact with? Because over the years, what I've found is that there's a lot of other business owners that want to do partnerships, they want to do collaborations, they want to do networking, they want to do this and that, kind of like what you're experiencing. But then I feel like I'm like pushing business their way. I'm making referrals. I'm doing these things. I'm, you know, I would go out and shoot video content and I would write the social media posts and I do all these things. But then there was like nothing in return, you know? And so it's like, I want to build this thing. Like I have this idea that I want to build this thing in the local area aside from, you know, what I'm doing right now with beyond the uniforms, but in our own local area. But in this instance, it's going to have a greater impact when I can do it with more than just me, but finding those key people, I think is the hardest part yeah. um, in, in business because everybody says they want to do business. Everybody says they want to do things, but when it comes down to it, to get your, basically to get in the trenches, um, you know, that's, that's when you find out who the, who the true entrepreneurial spirit people are unfortunately yeah there's a there's a meme out there um just get, i'm gonna take it kind of sort of out of out of context but 
it has like that picture of the guy that's you know dismounting uh the humvee and he's like jumping off of it or something like that and the captions like everyone wants to be an operator until it's time to be an operator I, I, I kind of take it the same context as like everyone wants to be in business up until it's time to actually have a business. Um, yeah. I, and I, it, it's just, it's dumbfounding that, you know, so many people have ideas and, you know, you can credit to education. Sure. Like not knowing how to do stuff. And YouTube is the best free university there ever is. Yeah. yeah you get a free, I got, a, I got a YouTube education. So Ex exactly. But in depending on who you follow, obviously you got to do your research, but, YouTube is fantastic use of knowledge. So if you come back to me and like, well, I love to do this and I have no idea how to do it. I don't have time to teach you. Find out on your own. Yeah. Like yeah. As, as, as kind of sorry as that sounds, it goes back to value. If you come to me and you already have value, that's worth it more. You could work great, everything. And I would love to do that. And you might, you know, you got to bring something to the table. Unfortunately, that's where I am in my part of my right. business. Um, you got to bring something to the table. Um, and that's where, I think value to me means the most. Yeah, that's, that's a hundred percent true. You know, I, the other thing that I really learned from, you know, people like Tony Robbins and all those other big, you know, influence influencers is that if you want a partnership, if you want a collaboration, or if you want something, you need to come from a value first position. Like don't mm -hmm. go. And of course this goes across social media. I mean, I'm hit up on LinkedIn all the time, every single day about, Hey, I can get you more followers. And you know, you know, the whole, spam and stuff um and not to discredit that they're trying to earn business you know they're out there doing what they they need to do to try to make money but um it's i don't think it's ever happened where i've actually had somebody come from how can i help you here here's something that i can do for you to start that relationship it's come they're coming from a value position first and a lot of people unfortunately don't come from that it's like oh well, i can help you but why don't you buy into my software or buy into my coaching program right it's like if you want a partnership and that's trying to sell something but if you want a partner like a true partnership and a true collaboration then you need to like you said perfectly you need to come from a position of bringing something to the table like i am you know in the local area here in dallas uh in the denton area i'm trying to start this newsletter for for a uh, local for the local area talking about fun things to do and but it's going to be not boring <laughs> because there's a lot to those newspapers and articles out there already and they're all boring they're all they all read like you know like the 1800s news newsletters that you used to get in the mail but i'm creating one that's going to be fun and entertaining and highlighting the fun stuff that it's hard to find um, and there's people that want to jump on board but again it comes down to it's like well can you run this ad for me or can you put my business in that i'm like okay well what are you doing <laughs> you know anyway i know we can go down a rabbit hole on that but um uh we we won't we'll save that for maybe for another talk if we hop <laughs> right. back on but i do want to ask um since you're kind of down that road too i want to you know obviously ask you and get another perspective on it um what are a few things like if somebody were to approach you and want to help you with your either your podcast or your apparel company like what are some things that you're looking for in in terms of value that somebody can bring to the table the, to my business specifically or just in general um, it could be either or like if they're coming to work with sure. you or if you're looking for a partnership, like what are some things that you'd be looking for as far as somebody? Because I know we talk about like people need to come to the table with value, but some people might be like, what's that mean? Like, what does that look like? So for me, if you have value, um, that could be education. It's something, something as simple as education. That's kind of the cliche answer, to be honest. Or it could be passion, right? I have a passion. If someone comes to me, I have a passion for soccer or football, I guess, to be politically correct, um, you know, uh, then, um, okay, great. Well, you might have a passion for it, but do you know the ins and outs? Do you know, do you know the different, you know, who, what coaches are where? Do you know, do you follow the trades, you know, or transfers as they call it in soccer? Do you know, you know, your teams, you know, your leagues, just stuff like that. That's value. If you come to me and like, oh, I love Manchester United. Oh, okay, cool. Who's your favorite player? <laughs> all right i like their colors okay doesn't doesn't really give me value man like wait we can talk sport all day but you got to be able at the end of the day it's like anything when like you got to be able to hold a conversation you gotta be able to network and stuff like that so um you know so, someone that i would be a person to be looking for is someone that um i've always been told and i believe this too something i'm still looking for is that 
uh, one, some, if you're gonna hire to someone else or uh, hire someone, it should be someone that does something better than what you do. So for me, I am trash at marketing. Um, so my person would probably be a marketing person. It might be an accountant. Uh, it might be um, graphic design, for example. I'm more of an idea guy and a networking guy and a management side of things. That's what I like to do. Um, so for me, value is bringing something to the table that I don't already have or you do it better. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, hire, you know, I don't remember who said it, but hire the people that do the things better than you. I mean, that's perfectly said. Yeah. Because you can't yeah. be an expert in everything, right? My my dad used to say, um, you know, every, everyone hears that everyone hears once you're the smartest person in the room, find a new room, you know, and then yeah. uh, and then my dad always my dad used to say, um, surround yourself with people that are smarter than you. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think Alex yeah. Ramosi says it all the time like that. Um, yeah. So and I, I truly believe that. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's how you grow. Yeah. I mean, you you got you surround yourself with other people that can lift you up and take you to another yeah. another level that you're not at. Um, now, to kind of wind down, um, you, as far as the podcast and apparel, um, you have guests that come on your podcast. Like, who fits? Like, what kind of people are you looking for to get on your podcast? Like, if some of you are listening to this, like, how can we help you get some more guests yeah. on your podcast? To be honest, we were talking about it in, in a little bit in the pre-show, but um, yeah, uh, I'm always looking for people to come on the show. Uh, for me, it could be fans with like absolutely crazy stories. It could be uh, coaches on like how to get recruiting. It can be scouts, you know, because when I was a kid and I was scouted, I was started getting scouted at, you know, 12, you know, 12 years old, you know, 10 years old, something like that. And I was getting scouted and again in high school and so on. But like, I didn't know who to talk to. I didn't know who, I didn't know what a sports agent was. I didn't know all these different things. Right now we got NIL. NIL is blowing up. I have three NIL athletes that I have signed. Um, which is fantastic. Um, uh, I, uh, two males and one female, uh, all soccer players. Two are D1 and w the other one's a D3. And um, and they're on our, our um, socials. And, uh, and um, yeah, it, it's been going good with them. Um, I think that uh, when I look for someone to come on the show, it's something that I love hearing stories like that. And when you hear sports stories, you know, um, everyone knows, I don't know if you know this, but there's a story is about, um, let me check the date real quick. Um, and, uh, it's, uh, the story of Leicester city. Um, if you're familiar with, uh, Leicester city, um, pretty much their, their story was in, uh, the 2016, uh, club campaign, they were 5,000 to one odds to win the championship. And they mm -hmm. won. Not only did they win, but they won by, I believe, 10 points over second place Arsenal, who's my favorite team. Um, and this is a team that wow. just got promoted like the year or so before, maybe from the second division. Um, not to get in the weeds of how soccer works, but we have different divisions. Yeah. And um, that's unprecedented. You know, like 5,000 to one. Yeah, that's like, crazy. Uh, I forgot what the comparison was, but the comparison at the time was something of like uh, like the miracle on ice, uh, I suppose, mm -hmm. historically speaking, would would be comparable. But um, it was just it was just an absolute like it was a crazy campaign. They were fantastic. And hearing stories like that, you know, the underdog story, everyone loves the yeah. underdog story. Yeah. Um, but and how how people. Uh, experience that or cherish that moment is what I like to hear about. I had a, a, a friend of mine who uh, is a law student that was, uh, um, he was uh, abroad studying abroad and he was in Spain, you know, he was a kid from, uh, kid from Texas studying in Spain. You know, he's only, you know, one of a hundred, maybe handful of white kids running around in Spain and he was watching, mm -hmm. you know, Real Madrid, Barcelona, all these other, and he had to learn Spanish and I was like, that's a wild story, you know, and stuff like that. And how I like to, I like to talk to players on how players got scouted and how they got involved in their, in their, in their teams. Uh, even nutritionists like soccer is a, is a long distance per se sport, yeah. short, 
short sprint, long time sport. So hearing about how trainers train for recovery, you know, endurance, you know, mindset, right? I have one, one of my good friends is an ALS instructor and he, we, him and I talked about, you know, what is a, what is a captain look like? What's a leader look like in the sports world? We have another episode that is more comical. It's like, like uh, classic uh, kits, right? In soccer, we call them kits or jerseys. And it's like classic kits, you know, like not a lot of people don't know that there was an Atletico Madrid Spider-Man jersey, you know, and there, and then all these other things. And like people just, and the podcast is kind of the voice of the brand per se, where helps, especially here in the States, open the eyes to the culture that is of soccer and hearing those stories and uh, those different shows definitely shed some light to that. Yeah, no, that's awesome, man. Okay. Well, we got definitely some good information um, about <laughs> yeah. who, about who we can help you get on the show and hopefully, you know, anybody listening and be like, you know what, I want to, I want to listen to that. So, I mean, yeah. even if, you know, even if it's just a fan, you know, I think they're going to find some value in, in episodes and podcasts like that to listen to those yeah. stories and things like that. So yeah. awesome, man. Well, hopefully that uh, definitely works out for you. Um, last question, man, is uh, anybody who wants to get a hold of you or reach out to you to learn more about your, your uh, apparel brand or to get on your podcast, what's the best way for them to do it? Yeah, for sure. So I'm on all socials. Um, LinkedIn, Kyle D'Antoni, uh, Instagram, Kyle D'Antoni, um, Facebook, Kyle D'Antoni. Um, and then, yeah, last name is spelled D-A-N-T-O-N-I for those that uh, don't know how to spell D'Antoni. And then on, and then on, uh, Instagram. I'm probably most most active on Instagram. Uh, it's uh, 90 Apparel or 90 Dot Apparel, um, soccer culture brand. And then uh, we're also on Facebook. Um, and then on TikTok, it's uh, 90. Uh, I think it's called 90 Media now. I think I had to change it. And then uh, last one is Spotify um, for the for the podcast. Um, we're on all streaming platforms: Spotify, Apple. Google, you name it. And it's uh, inside the 90 is the podcast. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah. I'll put that information here in the show notes or in the description. Um, I'll, I'll put something across the screen so people can that are watching it. Um, we'll be able to check that out. So awesome, man. Well, Hey, I appreciate your time. Um, it's, it's been a great conversation. I learned a lot. Um, it, it seems like we had a lot to, in common, I guess, in, in yeah. the business entrepreneurial journey, yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, but we'll have to connect afterwards. You know, we're in, like I said, we're in that um, university entrepreneurial group and we'll see um, if we can connect and help out in some way or, you know, figure something out to collaborate. So other than that, I'm rambling on, I'm going to shut up now, uh, but we appreciate you, Kyle. Thank you so yeah. much, man. And uh, God bless and good luck on your business. Awesome. Thanks for having me.